Hello, my name is Jonathan Harris from Worldwide Camera Exchange. Leica 6-bit coding. You would have come across this if you are a Leica uh, M user or if you are using um, an SL, SL2 or SL3 with Leica M lenses. What is it and why is it important? I'm going to talk about, I'm going to split this, this video into, uh, into effectively two sections. I'm going to talk about 6-bit coding in relation to the Leica M cameras. Um, and then I'm going to talk about 6-bit coding in relation to the SL2 and SL3 cameras. Now these aren't Leica M lenses, but ironically, the 6-bit coding, in my view at least, is a lot more important on the SL2 and SL3 cameras than it is on the rangefinder cameras. But I'll, I'll, I'll come to that and I'll explain why in a second. Okay, so first of all, Leica M cameras. The 6-bit coding was first introduced for the M8, which was the first of the digital cameras. It was introduced because the camera needed to know the focal length of lens that was mounted to it. With the digital sensor, there were certain issues that were, were created when, when using Leica M lenses. And if the camera knows the focal length of lens uh, set, the camera can automatically compensate, compensate for those issues. This mainly relates to wide angles, less so telephotos and less so standards. But with the wide angles, there were issues with uh, aberrations, there were issues with vignetting. And if you have the 6-bit coding, the camera will automatically compensate and reduce, reduce, reduce the, the negative effects of those, which is, which is a quite, quite a handy thing to have. The other thing that it will do, do for you with Leica M cameras is to give you the focal length data um, in the um, in the EXIF file and again in my view that's quite quite a useful thing to have so if you're using an M camera particularly if you're using wide angle lenses I would recommend either buying a six bit lens or if you don't particularly want to go go to the expense of buying a, a six bit lens they were they're always the later lenses they're all more expensive then look at get either getting your lens converted or look at uh, converting it yourself. I'll come to that later in the video. There are some very quick and easy things you can do to actually six bit convert a lens yourself, which is fantastic. Okay, so that's the Leica M stuff. Now, Leica SL2 and SL3, they have image stabilization. And for the image stabilization to work correctly and effectively, the camera needs to know the focal length of the lens set. That's why it's important if you are using M mount lenses, whether they be Leica, Zeiss, uh, Voigtland or whatever, that's why it's important that if you're using those lenses on an SL2 or SL3, you use the correct Leica adapter that, and you also make sure your, six, your lenses are six bit converted. If you use the correct adapter, then the information from the lens will be transferred to the SL2 or SL3 via the Leica adapter. There isn't a non-Leica adapter I know of that transfers the 6-bit information through. Now you can in all cases, in the in cases of SL2, SL3, or with the M cameras, you can dial this information in manually, but we all forget, don't we? It's better to have it automated if we can. So Look at what I've done here. I have taken some pictures with a 50mm lens mounted to a Leica SL2. I've taken some pictures. The first one I'll show you now is taken at a 50th of a second with a 50mm lens on an SL2 with the image stabilization switched on. You'll see it's tack sharp, absolutely tack sharp. I then took another picture, exactly the same, with the image stabilization turned off. Now this is a 47 megapixel sensor. I'm hand holding at a 50th of a second with a 50 mil lens. You'll see there's a tiny bit of camera shake. It's not bad, but you'll see with these really high resolution sensors, it's important to have the image stabilization turned on if you can. Now, what I did next was to manually uh, input a one three a 300 millimeter lens through the uh, through the menu on the back so with this next picture the camera thinks it has a 300 mil lens mounted have a look at the results clearly that's not acceptable so i've taken one picture with image stabilization one picture without image stabilization and a third picture with the image stabilization incorrectly set clearly from that you can tell 
you're better off without image stabilization than you are with, with, uh, with the image stabilization incorrectly set within the camera. So if you're using six bit lenses on an SL2 or an SL3, that won't be an issue for you because the camera will automatically know the lens set and so will, will, will adjust the IS accordingly. If you're setting it manually, and you forget if you switch from a 135 to a 35 and you forget to change it through the menu on the back of the camera, you could get some fairly nasty results. So that's why I say that if you are using SL2, SL3 cameras, it's much more important to get the 6-bit coding sorted. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, if you've got a later Leica M lens, the 6-bit coding is in the mount anyway, so it's not an issue. But if you've got an older, Leica M lens, or you've got a Voigtlander lens, or a Zeiss lens, or, or, or other lenses um, with adapters, um, you won't have the 6-bit coding. Now, if you've got older Leica M lenses, Leica will still convert them. There are still lots of um, lenses from the 1970s and 1980s and 1990s made by Leica that don't have the coding. You can send those off to Leica, and they will do them for you, which is if it's a lens you're using a lot, that's probably the best thing to do. Um, if it's a lens you're not using that often, or if it's a lens that's not particularly expensive and you don't want to spend the money, then there is another option. It is using this little device here, called, made by a company called Akara. What this allows you to do is to manually mark the lens mount with the correct markings, which will, will effectively tell the camera what what focal length to set. Um, with this little adapter, they give you a chart which shows you the, the, the codings to use, shows you which, which bits to mark, and it's, it's an absolutely fantastic device. So this is a Voigtlander lens. What you'd basically do, it worked the same if this was an old, um, what else, what else have I got here? I've got an old Leica lens, this is an old 135 Leica lens. I've got both of these, both of these marked with a six-bit coding just there. I hope you can see a low layer picture as well. What you need to do is to take your lens, you take this little adapter, and there's a little, um, little piece on the underside there which just coincides with the, um, the lens release um, engraving, the lens release um, um, machine slot, so you know it's, it's positioned correctly. Once that's on the mount, you can then use a pen to mark the, the coding in the, in the correct place. Um, do follow the instructions though. Um, the, the company that made this, Akara, give you very clear instructions, follow them. I didn't. I tried doing this with a, with a standard Sharpie, thinking that was work, and it didn't. Um, I then had to get the correct pen, which they recommend, and with the correct pen, it, 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 it does work. Issues I've come across with the silver mount, it's not a problem. It tends to work every time. Once you've got the hang of it, it really is straightforward. Um, I have come across some Voigtlander lenses with black mounts, and with that, what I did was to just use a white a white pen, uh, it's effectively a white paint, so you can mark the white sections, not the black sections, on a black mount. Um, that worked absolutely fine as well. The other issue I've come across is, with a lot of use, the pen can gradually wear off, and it does take a lot of use. Obviously, you've got the metal on metal surface, the, 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 the pen will eventually wear off. As it does wear off, what you'll get is an error message on the camera saying um, that the lens isn't recognised, so you know it's worn off, so it gives you a warning to replace it. All you've got to do is put the, the, clean, clean, the, clean the, the markings off, put the thing back on, remark it, really is straightforward. But I've noticed on Voigtlander, Voigtlander lenses, and I've only seen this on Voigtlander lenses, Voigtlander lenses have a, have a groove actually engraved in the mount. So there's a groove machined all the way around there, and coincidentally, or when you put the black marking, mark markings on, those black markings sit within the grooves, groove. So with, with Voigtlander lenses, you never have that metal on metal um, friction that will wear the, the markings off. So six bit coding is pretty straightforward on, on, on any non Leica lens, but on Voigtlander lenses, it's particularly easy because the marking won't wear off, which is fantastic. Um, so in summary, is it worth doing? Well, yes, it is. It's a pretty simple thing to do. If you're, if you're doing it yourself, it really is straightforward. And I, I think, frankly, if you're using Leica M lenses or, or your, sorry, Leica M cameras, or if you're using SL2 and SL3 cameras, it's most definitely worth doing. 
And don't forget, if you're using SL2, SL3s, you really should do it, because if you don't, you are likely to have issues with camera shake if you forget to do it manually, which of course we all do. I hope that's useful. If you've got any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, please subscribe and like, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.